our first pages Friday book from the Oosterhout Free Library, The Seer of Shadows, is a good one for the Halloween season. It's about a photographer who claims to take pictures of ghosts. This was a surprisingly popular and respectable trend for several decades after the Civil War, and I'll show you some of those crazy photos when we're, when we're done introducing the story. Seer of Shadows is written by Avi, that's a pseudonym or fake name of a popular American author. He lives in Colorado. Seer of Shadows was published by HarperCollins and I'm Miss Melissa. It was an October morning in the year 1872 and New York City's air was so befogged with white mist and dark smoke that I could barely see across the street. All the same, I was attending to my daily chore of sweeping our small front court with its painted sign, Enoch Middleditch, Society Photographer. Chanting to look up, I was startled to see a black girl standing just beyond our low iron gate. It was as if she had just stepped out of the haze, dressed in her somber cotton servant's garb. A tiny wisp of curly black hair poked out from beneath her white cap. Although clearly she was a servant, her posture was upright, quite proud, not at all deferential. I judged her to be about the same age as I, 14, but her smooth face, round and dark, seemed devoid of emotion until I noticed her eyes. They were full of a deep and brooding intensity. My first thought was that she was looking at me, but then I realized it was our sign that held her attention. May I help you? I asked. She turned her gaze upon me. Who are you? The question, asked so bluntly, was unexpected. I'm Mr. Middleditch's apprentice. Does he make portraits, she asked. Portraits, carte de visite, and studies. My mistress, Mrs. Frederick von Mach, requires a portrait, she said. Then you've come to the right place. Good, said the girl. She will be at your door tomorrow at two. Though surprised by her presumption, I said, I'll tell my employer perfectly aware that Mr. Middleditch had no pressing matters to attend to. Business was anything but lively. With a curt nod, the girl walked and tur turned and walked away, vanishing into the mist as eerily as if she appeared. Not only did I wonder where she'd come from and gone to, I was uncertain whether to believe her or not. But knowing it would be a good thing if her mistress did come for a sitting, I put aside such questions and hurried into our rooms to inform Mr. Middleditch that he actually had a customer. Still, there was something very unsettling about the girl, so much so that I could not get her out of my mind. Was it the way she suddenly appeared and disappeared into the mist? Was it the tone of her voice? Was it the brooding look in her eyes? That said, I shall be the first to admit there was nothing about her appearance to foretell the extraordinary events that were to follow. From the inside cover. Newberry medalist Avi weaves one of his most suspenseful and scary tales about a ghost who has to be seen to be believed and must be kept from carrying out a horrifying revenge. The time is 1872. The place is New York City. Horace Carpentine has been raised to believe in science and rationality. So, as apprentice to Enoch Middleditch, a society photographer, he thinks of his trade as a scientific art. But when wealthy society matron Mrs. Frederick von Mach orders a photographic portrait, strange things begin to happen. Horace's first real photographs reveal a frightful likeness. It's image of the von Mach's dead daughter, Eleonora. Peg, the von Mach's black servant girl, then leads him to the truth about who Eleonora really was and how she actually died. Joined in friendship, Peg and Horace soon realize that his photographs are evoking both Eleanor's image and her ghost. Eleanor returns a vengeful wrath intent on punishing those who abused her. Rich in detail, full of magic of early photography, here's a story about the shadows, visible and invisible, that are always lurking near. That sounds like it gives you a lot of the plot, but there's a lot more to it. Now about the, the basis in history, let me show you some of these photos. For a few decades after the Civil War, 
some people who had lost loved ones in war or remember how short lifespans were at that period of time, sought comfort in the trend of spiritualism, the idea that they could receive loving signs from beyond the grave. They were easy targets for photographers whose new technology was mysterious on its own and not well understood. Spirit photography became surprisingly mainstream. Several years after President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, his wife, Mary, commissioned a photo that she hoped would show the image of her dead husband. It did, and she took great comfort from it. The photographer she hired had previously gone on trial for fraud and been acquitted because no one could prove what he did. Even Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the author of Sherlock Holmes, believed in many elements of spiritualism and wrote a book defending spirit photographers. He was also fooled by another photography hoax, believing that fairies were real. We have a book on that as well. So come check out all the things we have to offer, both online and at the library. Bye-bye.